ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله ارسله الله الى الناس كافه بشيرا ونذيرا فبلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه وتركنا على المحجه البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها الا هالك فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى اله واصحابه ومن اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته ودعا بدعوته الى يوم الدين يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما احبتي في الله وفي الاسلام وصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله والاحسان فان الله مع الذين تقوا والذين هم محسنون يقول الله عز وجل انما المؤمنون اخوه فاصلحوا بين اخويكم واتقوا الله لعلكم ترحمون my beloved brothers and sisters in islam I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for gathering us here today in this blessed day, Yawm al-Jumu'ah. I want to focus today on something that I am sure many of us here already know. But it is important, and this is the point of the khutbah, to remind ourselves of that fact. And perhaps reflect over it and see where we can do better. What I'm referring to, my brothers, is the fact that we are brothers. That... we are related to one another through our faith and that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has emphasized that in the quran i am speaking about al ukhuwa fil islam brotherhood in islam sisterhood in islam being connected because of la ilaha illa allah muhammadur rasulullah this is the bond that we have between us it is not a bond of blood it is not a bond that came as a result of living next door to each other it is a bond that is based upon tawhid it is the a bond based upon the very thing that justifies our existence la ilaha illa allah and that bond comes with rights and responsibilities but before that we have to understand what that means what does it mean for us to be brothers and sisters in islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he speaks about it he treats it like it is the greatest ni'mah Allah has bestowed upon us the brotherhood that we have for asbahtum bi ni'matihi ikhwana and you became brothers because of Allah's ni'mah and blessing and bounty it is that which our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam emphasized on as he came to medina when we list the things rasulullah sallallahu wa sallam emphasized on when he was building the first community in medina it was building the masjid the community hub and then a place of worship of course to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then akha bayna al muhajirin wal ansar he made the muhajirin and ansar brothers real brothers to the point where they were living together eating with each other and even inheriting from each other This is a concept that the sahaba understood that the person that says la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah is my brother what is for him is for me and what is upon me is upon him we are in this dunya together and the question i want to ask ikhwani fillah to myself and all of us is is that really the case today Do we exemplify that which the prophet taught the companions and that which Allah spoke about in the Quran? Do you truly consider your Muslim brothers lip service is one thing? Yes, akhi. Subhanallah. We call each other akhi all the time. It has become a thing, you know, when assalamu alaykum akhi, how are you doing? Akhi, how are you? Brother, I'm going to meet the brothers. We say it. But do we really understand what that means? 
When your blood brother, the one whom your mother and father give birth to, or one of them, calls you for help, you will respond, unless you're a bad brother. Most of us will respond. Do we feel the same way about the rest of the Muslims? You want your, your family to prosper. Do you feel the same way about your fellow Muslims? And what's beautiful, Ikhwani Fillah, and you will see this in the Quran and the Sunnah, is that the brotherhood of Islam is not bound by time. When Allah tells us how should we feel about the Muslims that came before us, we say, Rabbana gfir lana, O Allah, forgive us, wali ikhwanina alladheena sabaquna bil iman, and our brothers that had iman before us. You see Abu Bakr and Umar as your brothers. You see the scholars in the past, the righteous brothers and sisters in the past, as your brothers and sisters. You make dua for them. You think about them. You read about them. You hear about them. And the same should go for the ones that are living in your time, and perhaps even more. This ikhwani filah, we have to understand it. It comes with a responsibility. The Prophet said in the hadith, Al-Muslimu, Akhul Muslim. The Muslim is the brother of the other Muslim. لا يظلمه. Here is the first thing you have to do. He doesn't oppress. Do not oppress your brothers. ولا يسلمه. The Prophet ﷺ said, nor does he allow others to oppress. You would not allow that. So now, let's examine how we feel when we hear about our brothers and sisters being oppressed over the, all over the world. Has the concern died or is it still present? How do you feel? Assess. And perhaps you need to reignite what you feel for your brothers. Because it starts there. It starts with a concern that then results in aid and support. At the very least, you'll make dua. You'll remember them in your dua. You won't become a selfish person that makes dua, only thinking about your prosperity and your families. That's even if you think about your family. But rather, you're making dua for everyone. Something the Prophet encouraged a lot. Make dua for the mu'mineen. Look at Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, making dua for himself, his parents, walil mu'mineen, and for the believers. Look at Ibrahim alayhi salam. When, he, when Allah gave him the great status of being an imam. Allah said to Prophet Ibrahim, Inni nasi imama. I will make you to the people a leader. Someone that is followed. And is he not followed? He is seen as the greatest prophet or one of the greatest prophets, not just by Muslims, even by uh, Jews and Christians. His name is mentioned. In the tahiyat, the only prophet after Rasulullah that we mention is Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him a beautiful legacy and Allah promised him. I will make you an imam. What is his response? How about my offspring and my progeny and the people that come after me? He didn't only mean those who he gave birth to, Ismail and Ishaq, and Allah responded to his dua and made them prophets. But for generations to come, and this is why he made dua for Mecca before Mecca even existed. He asked Allah to send these people a prophet before they were even born. He was making dua for them. That concept... That brotherhood concept that you feel for everyone, those are in the past, those will come in the future. This has an actual manifestation in this world. When we plan for the future, let's build centers that will last a, a generations and the Muslims that will be born here in future generations will benefit from them. Well, why do we care about them? Because they are our brothers. Let's make dua. Let's read the books of the people in the past. Let's continue their reward. Why? Because they are our brothers. This is a concept that we have to hammer home. And from that comes uh, changes in our behavior, changes in our actions, changes in our speech and our tone. The moment you truly see, this is something we say, Alhamdulillah, here in this masjid, we have a lot of reverts that walk in, uh, um, through our doors that want to take the shahada. There's something I say to them a lot. The moment I take the shahada, I like to say to them, welcome to the biggest family on earth. But to be honest, I wish that was really the case. That we, and inshallah it will be, and we will work towards that. That we really are a family. That we really are like this, right, together. And that means everyone that says, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, regardless of whatever their race and their ethnicity is. Which is why we need to welcome when people approach you for marriage that are not from your immediate family or culture. This is a good thing because they're coming to you because you're a Muslim and they are a Muslim. It is the bond of Tawheed that is stronger than anything else. 
when we they request aid from us in different countries, there should be no disparity in the charity that is sent to countries. If you're from Africa, then you need to be able to aid your brothers and sisters in Pakistan and not be thinking, well, I have my own hometown to worry about. That's not how Islam works. Look at us here from different homes and different backgrounds, side by side. We are being trained in our salah. We stand together. It doesn't matter where you are from. You are my brother and I am your brother. Look at what happened to Mus'ab ibn Umair, a beautiful companion. When his brother, Abu Aziz, when his brother rejected Islam, rejected faith, faith and fought against the Prophet, that moment he ceased to be his brother. And he participated in the battle of Badr against the Muslims. And Mus'ab was fighting for the Muslims. And then his brother was captured. His brother was captured. Who was trying to kill? His blood brother was captured. That wasn't a believer. Who was trying to kill and murder and maim the Muslims. And when he was being dragged as a prisoner, he said, when he saw that, he said, he appealed. He said, Mus'ab, are you going to let them treat me like this? And he said, tighten the chains on him. And his mother, his mom, is rich, so demand a high ransom. And then he said, am I not your brother? He said, the one carrying you in chains is my brother. This is Islam. Stronger than, thicker than blood. Thicker than anything else. Thicker than color, ethnicity, all of it. So, ikhwani fillah, it is extremely important that we appreciate this and we apply these ayat. Among the benefits that we gain from truly acting as brothers to each other, like Allah says in the Quran, ikhwa. The believers are but brothers to each other. So, rectify and reconcile between your brothers. And fear Allah, have taqwa. What do we gain from this? We gain from this mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So next time there is an appeal for a cause, remember it is your brothers that are hungry and thirsty and in trouble and come to their aid. The next time you are making dua, remember it is your brothers that need your dua, where they are the ones who have died before us and the ones who are coming. The next time you are discussing how to further our community, remember that we are setting now the foundations for how future generations will live. They are your brothers that are going to come. And this concept, Ikhwan, is extremely important. And if we understand this, then we truly become united. And when we stand united, we will never fall. Like Allah and His Messenger promised us, أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر لي ولكم وللسائر المسلمين كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على أمور الدنيا والدين والعاقبة المتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين uh, Brothers and sisters, if you can move forward and try and make space for some of the people that are standing um, I know that there is a lot of people here and I'll try and conclude quickly inshallah ta'ala um, I want to make a few more points to really help us understand how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger has emphasized the brotherhood in Islam and perhaps some lessons that we can take from this um, number one, what are some of the things that can compromise our brotherhood? Transgressing upon each other. And to mitigate that, our, our Prophet said to us, do not oppress each other and don't let others oppress as well. In fact, the Prophet one time said, aid your brother, whether he is the oppressed or the oppressor. And the Sahaba said, well, we understand the oppressed, how we can aid him. But if he's the one oppressing, he's the one that is making the trouble and the problems, how do we aid him? The Prophet ﷺ said, by stopping him. That is aiding him. That is being his brother. You are stopping him from sin. So sometimes admonishing, advising, and even stopping someone from doing something that is against Allah and his messenger and hurting others is being a good person, is being a good brother to them. But what if transgression happens, should we do? When Allah speaks about the concept of retaliation in the Quran, and brothers, and sisters, pay attention to this. Allah spoke about when one kills another, and then, of course, there must be a recompense. The, per the killer will either be killed for his crime, 
or he will be paying blood money or, or we know the ahkam and the rulings. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was speaking about the murderer, the killer, the criminal, Allah said, speaking to the relative of the one that was killed. Let's say your brother got killed. Let's say your sister got killed or someone. Now you, the relative who's demanding justice, Allah said, فَمَنْ عُفِيَ لَهُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ شَيْءٌ And whoever forgives from his brother or something, absolves his brother. You know the brother who, who the brother is? It's the person that was the killer. Allah is calling him a brother, reminding you even when, it's, when the worst crime is committed, it does not absolve this brotherhood. He is still your brother. He transgressed, which is why that's beautiful and lasting statement of our, uh, the Sahabi and Sayyiduna Ali. He said about the ones who fought against him in Ma'arakatul Jamal. He said, Hum ikhwanuna alayna. These people, they fought against him. He said they are our brothers that transgressed against us. Why is that concept being reminded? Even in these dire and dangerous and, and situations when people are actually transgressing, it is to remember that how you treat them and what you do. And no matter what they do, as long as they are people upon la ilaha illallah, there are rights that they will enjoy. La ilaha, that bond is thicker and stronger than any transgression they can do upon you. Now that doesn't mean that we don't stand against just, uh, injustice or that we don't uphold justice or that criminals are not treated as criminals. But as long as they are upon la ilaha illallah, they are our brothers. I want to fin finish with this one point. And that is, um, sometimes the way we treat those that disagree with us in matters of creed and practice as if they are not our brothers we are now in Rabi'ul Awwal and this month is famous for the celebrating of the birth of the Prophet now we have many times from this minbar mentioned what should be done on this day and what shouldn't be done and that there is no such thing as a practice of a, of a Eid al-Milad Many times, and we, alhamdulillah, we know that we do not do things that were not done by our righteous predecessors. We know this. But often I come and young men come to me, my family celebrate the Mawlid. What shall I do? Shall I cut them off is the first thing they say. La hawla wa la illa billah. The brothers and sisters that perhaps are less educated on a matter of this deen are still your brothers and sisters. Those that pray at other masajid are still your brothers and sisters. Those that may have wrong beliefs and perhaps that is cultural or they have not been educated enough are still your brothers and sisters. Treat them as such. Give them salam. Smile when you see them and try and advise them and educate them in the best way possible. And even when they don't listen to you, do they cease to be your brothers? They don't. Wallahi, they don't. If the man who killed your relative, Allah called him your brother, then the one who perhaps needs to be educated on a matter of our religion, the one who was perhaps raised in a family where there are certain practices that may be wrong, then the way we treat them should be the best way possible. They are our brothers and sisters, and they are part of this family. That when... We say to someone that accepts La ilaha illallah and enters to Islam, welcome to the biggest family in the world. They are part of that family. And we are on the same boat. And when we start thinking like that, we change the way we speak, how we speak. And we make steps closer towards the brotherhood that the Prophet wasallam taught us to have. Sallu ala nabiyyum ka amarakum allahu ta'ala haythu qal in allahu malaikati salluna ala nabi. يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ورضي الله عن خلفاء الأربعة أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر الصحابة والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم لا تفرق دمعنا هذا إلا بذنب مغفور وسعي مشكور وعمل متقبل مبرور اللهم حبيب إلى الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلى الكفر والفسوق والعصيان وجعلنا من الراشدين ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان اللهم اجعل خير عمرنا وآخرة وخير عملنا خواتمة وخير أيامنا يوم نلقاك فيه وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة